Meet the woman inspiring mothers everywhere to stay in the picture. Turn your boring bedroom into a boudoir you both will love. Your go-to boot guide for every style and personality. Welcome to Life Love Shopping. I'm Andrea Jackson. And I'm Michelle Yarn. And also, we're going to catch up with reality star Coco from her TV show Ice Loves Coco coming up. <laughs> yeah, she's even got a very special and sexy weather yeah. report we will <laughs> share with you. Uh, women take most of the heat when it comes to being bad drivers. We're even accused of such things as putting on makeup in the oh. car, come on, or yelling at kids in the back seat, or even this. Tawanda. <laughs> We don't do that on a regular basis, but women are now admitting we cannot park. A report from the AA Driving School found nearly a third of women will change their driving plans to avoid having to parallel park. 25% of women drivers say they lack the confidence to parallel park compared to 11% of men. Many drivers have even blacklisted certain <laughs> roads and car lots just to avoid parallel parking altogether. Yes. However, car companies have come out with something called Active Park Assist. Yeah, I've heard about which will help you automatically parallel park. It figures out where you are and then it will park for you. It's funny they say women don't want to be embarrassed. I hate that. If you're parking outside a restaurant and there's people yeah. watching you, you get so nervous because yes. you know they're thinking, oh, that woman, she can't drive. And then, of course, you screw it up <laughs> because you're nervous. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, first dates can be very nerve-wracking. And unfortunately, a lot of us ladies are guilty of committing a series of first date no-nos. 79% of women admit to talking about their ex while on a first date, as well as bringing up former flames. 48% give out way too much information. Yeah. They're nervous talkers. While 13% jump the gun by bringing up their desire to get married and have children. Uh, any first date, I know, Michelle, you're married, but you must yeah. have had a couple of first date you know, stories. You not me, but I have a friend, and I'll never forget this. She said he was on his phone the whole time. And she's like, I don't know what's going on. He's not paying oh. attention to me. She gets home. He had basically been giving a play-by-play -play of the date oh. on Facebook. And she's like, what? We didn't even enjoy the moment because he was too busy writing about it the whole time. Wow. Wow. Really awkward. Yes. How about you? Uh, well, I did have a guy first date, and he said to me, it's uh, down to you and another girl. I want to get serious, and I oh. want to be in a relationship, so you need to let me know right now. We yet to order the first cocktail. You're like, so, let me make it easy for yeah. you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> cross me off the list. <laughs> well, listen, we know every woman should have a great pair of boots in her closet, and our friends at Gal Time have the skinny on the best boots for you. First off, tough boots. They're the edgy girls must have. The new version is sleek, it's sexy, it's chic. You've got details like zippers and buckles or even a stiletto heel and you can really take the rock star look to a new level without all of the studs. Western boots, they're also big on the runway this year. The updated classic might have a pointed toe or a higher heel, but listen, it's still a cowboy boot. So look for fringe, embroidery, color, and southwestern prints as well. And when it comes to color, oxblood, this is the it color for fall. Even makeup, we're seeing a lot of this. And if you're thinking about adding a splash of color to your boot collection, you should try this out. It's a nice deep maroon shade. It's subtle and sexy and it spices up your outfit without being too trendy. She is loved by rapper Ice-T and fans get to see their unconventional yet true love on their TV show Ice Loves Coco. Now Coco is taking her career to a whole new level. Please welcome Coco to Life Love Shopping. Coco, tell us about your new clothing line. It's fabulous. Actually, it's been out for a couple years now, and it's made for the curvy women. Um, I always have problems finding clothes that would hug my curves, my hips, and my waist. And I figured, you know, if I, I'm not the only one in the world that has this problem. So it started out with jeans, and then it went on to gym wear, into club wear, now swimsuits, now it's moving into guy wear. And so I, I think it's, it's amazing, and it's, it's, it's made to make you feel comfortable but sexy at the same time. And let's talk about the teaser in the upcoming season of your show. Uh, it suggests that you might be doing some, some work in the news world as maybe a weather anchor. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> if you asked me as a young girl what I wanted to be when I grew up, you know what I said? What? I said I wanted to be a meteorologist. Really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, here's your chance, Coco. Yes. Give us, uh, give us a weather report. <gasps> oh God, put me on the spot like that. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. 
I think it's 50, 56 degrees at the moment, <laughs> with the storm system moving in by the end of the weekend. You're hired. You can do weather for life, love shopping any day of the week. Um, yes. Rumor has it you are ready to take over the lead role of Bo Peep in Planet Hollywood in Vegas. How does Ice feel about it? Because from what I understand, you two have not spent much time apart since you've been together. No. The last time we spent some time apart was when my sister was having her child and I was going to deliver it with, with her at the same time. So I had to run to Arizona, where I live is in New York, I had to run to Arizona. And that was about three days we spent some time apart. So yeah, this time around, going to Vegas, um, at the right now it's three months. It could be longer. Um, but yeah, it's going to be really, really difficult. He's on the set every single day, 14 hours a day. He can't leave New York. Oh. He's like, he's stuck here. And it's going to be something we're going to have to work through. And it's going to be awful in the beginning, but I'm sure I'm going to be so busy that I won't really notice it that much. I'm going to have my babies with me, though. So at least someone will be close to me. Thanks, Coco. You can watch her new show, Ice Loves Coco, Sundays on E. I think we may be adding a weather report to Life Love Shopping pretty <laughs> soon. Well, hey, all you new mamas. It is time to bring your sexy back. And trust me, as a fellow new mom, I know that may seem like an impossible feat, but it's not. Try these little tricks to feel sexy again. Make time to pamper yourself. Schedule an appointment and keep it, woman. A facial, a mani-pedi, even that haircut you've been putting off for months. Do whatever makes you feel more like a woman and not just a mom. And be a flirt. Remember flirting? You can send a sexy email or a text to your partner, or you can enjoy teasing and chatting about anything other than the kids for a change. Also, try buying some new PJs. You don't have to get crazy lingerie, but you can retire the nursing bra and the giant t-shirt <laughs> just for one night. You'd be surprised at how sexy you can feel in pajamas that don't have spit up and holes all over them, just saying. <laughs> and be flexible. That sexy time may be impossible at night if you're both exhausted, so consider a morning romp or a quickie while the baby naps. You'll be back in the swing of things in no time. Rainy days and snow days are on the horizon, so we found some fun indoor activities to keep the kids busy while saving your sanity. The secret to all of these, getting the kids involved. Give your kids room a makeover. Tackle a DIY design project like painting the walls. Get them involved. Rearrange furniture and reconfigure the room's layout. Cooking with the kids, also a great idea. Cooking with parents can help boost your child's confidence. Go with no-bake options like Rice Krispie Treats, frozen fruit juice bars, or popsicles. You can also create an indoor herb garden. Your kids will love getting their hands dirty while helping you plant herbs in mason jars. It's an easy way to add fresh flavor to your meals, too. You can also build a fort or a tent for good old-fashioned fun. Hit the linen closet and construct a fort or tent with sheets and pillows. And even plan a family vacation together. This is really cool. Take out a map or print one from the computer. Get out some pens and paper. Get them thinking about where they would love to go. Ask them why they want to go there, where they would love to stay, what to eat, see, and do. Well, you've heard the saying, the kid stays in the picture. But what about the mom? A recent post called The Mom Stays in the Picture has scored more page views on the Huffington Post this year than any other article. Yeah, we're talking 6 million page views and counting. And joining us to talk about it is the author, Allison Slater-Tate. Hey, Allison. Hello. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. The picture that started it all is yeah. a picture that you took in a photo booth at a birthday party. Tell us about this. I was um, at a birthday party for my 16-year-old niece, her sweet 16, and my brother and sister-in-law had hired a photo booth. My little boy came up to me midway through the night and said, Mommy, come be in the picture with me. And yeah. I was carrying the baby on my chest. We'd driven two hours. I had taken care of everybody more than myself, so I looked tired and you know rumpled and <laughs> and you feel it too you know yes yes I was like seriously no <laughs> and um, he was so excited and I thought I'm just I'm gonna do it and afterwards I had the picture in my car and I kept looking at it and I kept thinking I'm so glad what was I think like why wouldn't I be in a picture with my he was yeah, so excited yeah. and I started thinking about how um, we don't have pictures of me in with my children. I, I get my picture taken maybe Christmas Eve. Yes. Yeah, maybe special occasions or sure. Easter morning um, when I've gotten up extra early and done my hair or whatever, <laughs> uh, and it's not in a bun. Um, and I started thinking, like, I do 
so much with my children every day. I have been there for every moment, and when they look back, I'm not even there. Yeah, and it's true because you bring that up, and, and we've got a couple of pictures. You know, I don't have very many pictures with my mom. In fact, she took no pictures when she was pregnant, but here I am, and she's kind of in the background. <laughs> oh, she Looking snuck her sort, way of, in. sort of cool, but I've got the tiger glasses on, the printed pants, you know, feeling fresh. <laughs> you but, look awesome. Yeah, 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 please, there you go. Uh, a, a myth in the making. Yeah. Um, so, and Michelle, but you've, you know, yeah. you're, you're taking pictures. Well, it's funny, I got inspired after reading it, like many women have, reading your, your posts that you did, and I went to the pumpkin patch and took a picture but the early days with my son the first month when you're feeling frazzled you don't feel like yourself I had a little bit of baby blues I don't have any I have one photo of yeah. him and I and now he's big already so right. I can see where this transcends even moms right I mean you've had an overwhelming oh, response yeah. correct oh, yeah I, I've heard from men mm -hmm. um, both who say I'm so glad because I want my wife to get in the picture um, or who say I don't have pictures of my own mother, yeah. um, and I have three sons, so I can see them saying that someday. Um, I've heard from mothers who say, I wish I had. I've heard from daughters who say, I wish my mother had. Yeah. And this, Everyone. Has, this has spurred people like we're seeing here uploading photos of themselves with their kids, right? Yes. I mean, and yes. so your overall message for this is what? My overall message is that um, when you have, we, we are so centered in this society, we have cell phones that can take pictures every minute of the day. Mm -hmm. We delete the pictures of ourselves or we don't put them, we don't think they're Facebook worthy. We can get in some of the pictures and later on our children will have pictures of themselves by themselves a lot, but the ones that we're in with them connect them. It yes. makes their yeah. family, it completes their picture. We complete their picture. Having pictures of themselves in a vacuum doesn't tell them their story, but having us in there does. And you've got a great message, too, when it comes to you being there for all the special moments and the crucial moments. Yes. Allison, congratulations on all the success Thanks. on the Thank blog you. post. Thank for you. more info Thank on you. Allison Tate, just head to lifeloveshopping.com. All right, well, we know Election Day is almost here, and we have a preview of what's buzzing and news headlines for your week ahead. Plus, wish your bedroom looked like this, how you can create your own boudoir with just a few simple steps and furniture swaps. Next. I would have to say that don't take anything seriously. Don't take, I used to, t my whole life I've been so serious and so organized and so anal about everything that I did and everything structured that basically if you die tomorrow, that won't, everything that I've done won't matter. So just live life to the fullest and don't be so structured. Just be just outgoing, just open and just love your family and friends because that's what really matters at the end of the day. Welcome back to Life Love Shopping. Is your bedroom full of pink pillows and clutter or maybe no design at all? Our Rachel Kay is showing you how to turn your boring bedroom into a boudoir Ooh. you and your man will both love. Life is hectic, and what better place to turn into your own personal retreat than your bedroom? Here to show us how to do that is the founder of the number one home design firm, Mark B of Altogether Home. Welcome, Hi, Mark. Hi, Rachel. Nice to see you. This bedroom is beautiful. Thank you. Uh, let's talk colors. How do you choose colors that are both feminine and masculine? It's a fine line, Rachel, and this is my first bedding collection available exclusively at Altogether Home. I'm very excited about it. And you, if you notice, it's all kind of based in a little bit of a menswear classic tonality. Yes, with the grays. But we bring in that organic movement in the pillowcases. You know, we use a pop of color. Notice the lead pillows. Now, Rachel, yes. these lead pillows are super important. I'm going to offer you a max Maximum of three. Only three. Three. Too many pillows on a bed makes it not easy to take care of. But the throw pillows actually have a purpose, right? They, they really do have a purpose. Not only do they add the attitude to the bed, but they also hide the wrinkled sleeping pillows behind them. And it's very romantic, which is what you want in the bedroom is the romance. It's tailored, but that touch of feminine. Nightstands. The nightstands you've chosen in here are, they don't match. What I love about nightstands is they can be so flexible, and I'm a firm believer in shopping within your own house. Yes, pull from another room. This chest can be located anywhere, and what I love about it is one side of the bed gets storage, and then this desk 
A desk adds so much flexibility and livability and practicality to a room. And there's there are different heights. So they you did are. a little trick with the lamps. Tell Absolutely. us about that. Absolutely. I feel that to create that zen symmetry, lampshades should tend to line up at the tops. Yes. So since that nightstand is higher, mm -hmm. we stack some books under this lamp to get the lamp's heights to, to be matched. Mark, what do we put on the nightstands? There are four essentials for every set of nightstands. Number one, a box. Mm -hmm. A box can hold your TV remote, your cell oh, phone. That's genius. You know, clutter from your pockets, it keeps it contained. The loose change. Absolutely. Number two is a tray. It kind of does the same thing. It keeps all that clutter contained. Number three is always something live. Mm -hmm. A wonderful succulent that's easy to maintain. A beautiful blooming orchid. Mm -hmm. And the fourth thing again for that romance is a candle, candle. Yes. a candle even if it's just a little tea light that will burn itself out in about an hour mm -hmm. hour and a half you know it adds that little moment of glistening attitude and even more of that romance we can absolutely talk about that you have to have yeah. we have another chair in the room here we do and this is something that's very important for every household mm -hmm. every family member should feel that they have their chair, their retreat, their safe zone, their place to get away from the hecticness of everybody. So really a little secret is to make sure every family member has their dedicated space to grab a little bit of time for them. So if you don't have room for a man cave, you can just give him a man chair. Absolutely. <laughs> a place where he can disappear and not be disturbed for five minutes at least. Do you like to sit in the man chair? Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Thank you so uh, much, Mark. Great. We really appreciate it. Totally inspired now. The man chair. <laughs> All right, well, it's time to cast your ballot because Election Day is almost here. Lisa Spooner from our news partner, The Daily Buzz, is here with your news headlines for the week ahead. Hey, Lisa. Hey, guys. Well, hopefully everyone's feeling a little rested today after getting that extra hour of sleep, and you're going to need it because tomorrow is Election Day. It could be a long day of voting and then waiting for results. Political analysts are saying this is one of the closest races they've seen, and it could come down to the wire. So be sure to cast your ballots because remember, every vote does count. Now, Wednesday is National Bittersweet Chocolate with Almonds yes. Day. All right. Uh -huh. Bittersweet chocolate it. is Woo. a sweetened form of dark chocolate that does not contain milk in either liquid or dry form. Recent studies have revealed certain health benefits from regularly eating small quantities of bittersweet chocolate. So we said go ahead and dig in. Amen, sister. And all you diehard 007 fans, yeah. get excited. It's gone. Yeah, it's the day you've been waiting for. Friday is the release of Skyfall. James Bond's loyalty to M is tested as her past comes back to haunt her. And in limited release, Daniel Day-Lewis, Sally Field, and Tommy Lee Jones in Steven Spielberg's Lincoln, which focuses on the 16th president's final months in office. And that's a look at your week ahead. Guys, Skyfall and Lincoln, both great movies. And Can't chocolate. Want to go to and chocolate. Come on, this is gonna be <laughs> a, good a good week. Good week. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. We're gonna keep this food train rolling mm -hmm. and ask you: Do intelligent people drink more? The dirty martini details from a new survey. Next. Greatest love. <laughs> Well, my husband, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I have to add, because Spartacus and Maximus will kill me, I have to add my dog. Welcome back to Life Love Shopping. Well, the next time you're inclined to enjoy an extra glass of wine, it may be more about your intelligence than your generation. You don't know how to drink your whole generation. You drink for the wrong reasons. My generation? We drink because it's good, because it feels better than unbuttoning your collar, because we deserve it. We drink because it's what men do. Um, it's what smart people do, too. So says a new study claiming intelligent people drink more. Psychology Today says drinkable alcohol is a relatively new concept by evolutionary standards. Our ancestors got liquored up by eating rotten fruits 10,000 years ago. So the new research pegs the smarter set to be the ones more likely to drink. Although drinking more could be a reflection of exceptional brain power, it won't make you any smarter, maybe just a little more courageous. <laughs> That's right. That's why they call it liquid courage, yes. Thanks to Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram, we 
we have now become in the midst of a food porn revolution. And ladies, if you've ever found yourself drooling over a photo of a sizzling steak dinner or a towering chocolate dessert, your mind might be adding to your waistline. A recent study revealed looking at images of delicious food fires up our brain's mm. reward center, triggering women to overeat. FYI, food was not meant to be an image of desire. When we see food, our brains want to fill in the blanks with taste and texture. Just looking at a mouth-watering image of a steak dinner can cue your cravings and send them into Like overdrive. right now, thanks for that story. <laughs> I'm waiting for smell-o-vision because I want to be able to smell it too. <laughs> yes. Well, and when it comes to social networking, you know, I, I think people have a love-hate relationship with yeah. people who post photos of food on their pages. It sets your cravings up and you're like, can you send me the recipe, please? You yeah. Know? Do I really want to know what you're having for dinner, though? That's the other I, thing. I, sometimes I do. I watched Cupcake Wars a couple days ago, and I'm still craving a cupcake thanks to that. So I absolutely believe in the power of seeing the food on TV. Which I also think is why the Food Network is so popular, because oh, yeah. people, regardless of whether you like to cook or not, it's wonderful to have on the background yeah. just watching all of those dishes being made and having that yeah, food. Yeah, um, Paula Dean, I know I'm not going to make half the stuff she makes, but I like <laughs> watching her and seeing how it comes together, and then they always enjoy it at the end. It's like that dribble off the burger or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, I know. The taste tester, what a tough job that would yeah, be come on. to host your own Food Network show and then have to sample everything. <laughs> I'm sure not all the recipes are, are winners, but yeah. for the most the part. The majority, I think they're doing all yes. right over there. All right. Well, tomorrow on Life Love Shopping, if you plan on watching the presidential election, we've got some great ways to get the children involved. Plus, we're taking a look at some of the best awkward photos from the campaign trail, <laughs> like VP Joe Biden with these bikers, and we've got plenty more to show you. <laughs> Here at Life Love Shopping, we want to connect with you when we're not on TV. You can stay in touch by liking our Facebook page. You can also follow and tweet us on Twitter at Life Love Shop. That does it for Life Love Shopping today. Thanks for joining us. Go eat something now. Yes. <laughs> I'll get you a cupcake. Thank you. Yes. Cupcakes! <laughs> I love Louboutin shoes. Oh my <laughs> <Who> god. <doesn't? laughs> I can't get enough of those. But you know what? I'm also very addicted to internet shopping. I can spend hours on end just at home in my bed shopping away and no one's around me. I'm not bumping into people in aisles at all, but it's just like some obsession I have.